Napoli made history last year when they won their first Serie A title in 33 years. But this season, they are suffering a serious title hangover. Six games remain this season and they sit eight and there is a serious chance they don't play any European football next year. This is after going out in the round of 16 of the Champions League, losing the Supercoppa final and being thumped 4-0 by Frosinone in Coppa Italia. And this is just my personal opinion, but I could seriously see things starting to spiral next year with the likes of Varticellia and Oshman getting serious interest from some of Europe's biggest clubs. We need to step in, turn things around, and get Napoli their first European title in 35 years. Here is the default Napoli starting 11 we do have here as we take over. There are a lot of high points to this squad and a lot of low points. I don't think this is going to be a quick turnaround. And to be honest, I'm going to be relying heavily on Varticellia and Oshman in these first few seasons to carry us as we get the rebuild going. They are absolute weapons. But regardless, let's get stuck in here in season one and rebuild Napoli. See what I mean, lads? Already, we are three days into the career mode and the big European clubs are circling for Oshaman. I'm blocking it straight away, but you cannot tell me if Napoli miss out on playing European football next year, they won't seriously consider these offers. The lack of overall in our defense stood out like a sore thumb when I took over this club. So we're gonna nip that one in the bud real early. Nicolo Casale. The Italian center half is making the move from Rome down to Naples as we sign in from Lazio. We got 122 million pounds offered to us out of the gates for Vardashelia. Again, rejected and blocked, but I'm really interested to see in three or four years time where these two guys are playing in real life. And we have got our first permanent player departure in this rebuild as Mario Rui is heading to AC Milan. 20 million pounds is a really decent price tag. And more big departure news as Matteo Politano, he's also staying in Italy, but he's heading to Juventus. 25 million pounds. I'm going straight in. I want a new right winger and I on a new left back. There's been a trend in real life of young English players going to the Bundesliga, but we're starting a trend of our own and bringing them to Italy. Marcus Edwards, the English winger, has spent the last few years of his career developing at Sporting, but he's ready to take the next step as we bring him to Napoli here and we pay 35 and a half million pounds to do so. Some loan moves here though for some of our younger, more exciting players. The center half Natan off to Benfica for two years. And yes, but Lindstrom I'm also off on a two-year loan move, this time to Sociedad. There it is, fellas. Our new left back into the club. He's been ready to make his big move away from Brighton for a while now. And we are going to sign the Ecuadorian left back. Per this is Stupinan here, 30.2 million pounds. And that is going to give us a huge leg up as we get ready for this first season. We need to rewrite the wrongs of Napoli's season this year. A run in the Champions League would be great, but we need to make sure we are playing top Top four. We're in the top four of Italy every single season. And of course, we are in the Champions League. In real life, Napoli made it out of the group stages going down to Barcelona in the round of 16. I want to see if we can take them further than that. That's not like it would be nice if we could do a one season rebuild, but that's not really my expectation here. So anything past the round of 16 is going to be a huge success. Something I have clocked with our squad, though, is that our midfield is getting a little older. Zelinski's 29, Lobotka is 28 and then Zambo and Gisa 27. So we're probably going to have to think about getting some upgrades in the next year or two, which is why we have spent the past month and a half training Raspadori to become an attacking midfielder. Currently a 78 rated center forward. Let's press the triangle. He stays at a 78, but there is an option now for him to become a, a star player for us down the line. We're going to train him, maybe get him a load move moving forward, but Raspadori now an attacking midfielder. First of January, we are sitting fourth in in the league with a game in hand upon Juventus and Roma, but we have a number of teams breathing down our neck. Like I said, I don't expect us to go back to back in the league with Napoli, but top four is a must. We will not be doing better than Napoli in the Champions League though, which is disappointing. We finished third in our group, not into the round of 16. It's not going to be a one season rebuild, but we are going to be taking on Rangers in the prelims for the Europa League. So it'd be nice if we could go on a run there. This might be a dumb move given they are one of our number one competitors in the league, but nobody else has come in with a loan offer here for Raspadori. I want to see him get some growth. We're sending him on a loan to AC Milan for the
for the next two seasons. I'm all right with this, lads. I am A-OK -okay with this. In the future, next year, probably onwards. Man, I get memed about it, but the draws are killing us. Convert those draws into wins, and we are up into third, second, maybe even first. Down in the relegation battle here, though, it is going to be Frosinone, Cagliari, and Empoli. Fiorentina did win the Super Cup. We lost 2-0 to Fiorentina. And AC Milan have won Coppa Italia. We went out to AC Milan in the semifinals. And if our man Raspadori scored against us, I'm going to be so mad. Manchester City beat Real Madrid to win the Champions League in Season 1. So in the prelims, we went out 5-2 to Rangers, which is incredibly disappointing. But as we move on, the winners of the Europa League, this could well happen in real life. The almost invincibles in Leverkusen. Aston Villa, they win the Conference League. For us, it was a season of building foundations, but Oshaman, Edwards, and Vardashelia are building the trio of dreams. 25 and 9 for Oshman, 21 and 4 for Marcus Edwards, 19 and 8 there for Vardashelia. Even Zelinski, someone that I was debating upgrading on next year, might have just bought him another year in the starting 11. 28 goal contributions. That is brilliant. We are going to be losing a lot of depth, though. A lot of our bench players returning to their parent clubs, Dendonka, Traore, and Golini. We might need to get some squad depth in next year. And the big thing right here, we need to make sure we tie down Oshaman to a long-term contract extension. An extra three years, that's perfect. But that is our first year done and dusted in Southern Italy. Can we get Napoli back to the top next year? There is no denying that Napoli losing Kim Min Jae last season to Bayern Munich has hurt them a lot. He was one of their star players during their title winning season. They missed him in the back line this year. We are getting him back in this career mode. We're signing him from Bayern Munich. Paid overs, but I think he's worth every single penny. 70 million pounds to bring the South Korean Kim Min Jae back to Naples. Getting stuck in with the player departures early on here. I tried to sell this guy last year, didn't get any offers. So we're finally gonna say goodbye to Pascale Mazzocchi. He's heading to Mallorca. And we're also going to be saying goodbye to the Moroccan Chidira who did come back from his loan spell last year. Our first loan move of the year here, though, our Swedish defensive midfielder, Kayuste, heading to Brighton for the next two years. I wasn't 100% about this one. I've given it a lot of thought, but ultimately I've made the decision to sell. And the man we are selling here is Peter Zelinski. He had such a great year last year, but ultimately I knew we were going to have to upgrade him at one point. So why not cash in at the peak? of his powers 46 and a half million pounds that's gonna give us a lot of money added to the budget to go and sign a world-class center midfield to take us to the next level and we're gonna do just that ladies and gentlemen what a pickup this is for our midfield. Napoli, of course, have a great history of bringing Argentinian players into the club. I want to do just that and continue the tradition. We're going to sign Enzo Fernandez. This is huge, lads. One of my favorite players, despite him playing for Chelsea. Enzo Fernandez joining us here from the blues. He trades the dark blue of Chelsea for the light blue of Napoli for 75 mil. Vardashelia is our man going forward. That was always the plan, but it's not going to hurt us to get some backup help in here. Ricardo Sotil, the Italian, making the move from Florence to Naples. That is a great pick up there. His value has gone down, but I was happy initially with the 14.7 million pound price tag. We need a massive season though. I think with the additions we've made plus the growth last year, there is no reason why we can't be back challenging for the title here in Italy after a one year slumber. I want us to go deep in the Champions League. Last year, I was okay with mediocre results. This year, we demand perfection. I'm also super curious to see how Raspadori performs this season. He's up to an 81 overall now after his first, what, nine months at AC Milan. If he can get up to 82, 83, that's going to make things really interesting. I'll probably bring him back, change up the formation, and then probably say goodbye to Zembo and Gisa and get rid of the defensive midfield position. But taking a look at the Champions League group, this is a tough group. I mean, I didn't expect a walk in the park considering we finished fourth 
fourth in the league and we barely even qualified. But Atletico Madrid, Porto and Anderlecht, there are no easy games in this group stage. I still expect us to qualify for the knockout rounds, but it is not going to be an easy slog. This is, this is, I was going to say music to our ears, but I'm not here in the table right now. This is a sight for sore eyes though. One loss all season and it's clear the lads were listening. We're starting to convert those draws into wins and no surprise, we sit top of the table, 10 points clear of qualifying for European football, but four points clear of the title. And we will be playing in the knockout rounds. This is somewhat how I expected the group stages to go. Us and Atletico Madrid do qualify. Who do we have in the round of 16? We have Bayer Leverkusen, who I'm just going to assume at this point, haven't lost the game in the year and a half of this career mode. All right, I want to check in. How's old mate doing? Raspadori is 82 rated. Has Zambo and Gisa. He's gone up to an 83. All right, I'm going to keep the defensive midfield as the way for this second season. Hopefully, we can win the Champions League this season and don't even have to worry about it. But next year, it's looking like we're going to bring Raspadori back and then say goodbye to Zambo and Gisa. I'm so curious to see how we go here against Leverkusen. We're at home here in Naples, the Diego Maradona Stadium. Romani is in for the starting 11 in this first leg. Kim in Jay suspended. The lads absolutely knackered after our fixture congestion just three days after a domestic league game. But can we get the foundations laid? We do. Oshiman is going to give us a one nil lead to take back to the Bay Arena. We're back to full strength here. With a 1-0 lead, we head to the Bay Arena, a stadium I visited myself about a month and a half ago. An impressive structure. Can we get ourselves through to the quarterfinals? Vada Shelly, you're up to a 93. Oshiman up to a 91. Di Lorenzo also going insane. And we lose 2-0! Oh my god, what am I doing? I've just gone ahead and given us the world's biggest rap, only for us to go out and lose here. Alaba and is that Callum Wilson scoring in extra time? No, that is a piss take. What are we doing? We're out in the Champions League round of 16. All right, we just need to make sure we focus now. We have no excuses not to win Serie A. I tried to re-sign him as a third string goalkeeper. He didn't want it. So our soon to be former Ukrainian goalkeeper, Nikita Contini is heading to Coventry on a free next year. Despite our Champions League heartbreak, we have held on in Serie A and we have won the league title. We had a one year, we had a one year little hiatus and now we're back to the top. It's the second league title in what, 34 years it would be now? 35 years for Napoli. Juventus down in sixth, which is actually hilarious to see, but the relegated sides are Cremonese, Parma, and Lecce. Roma do win Coppa Italia. We've regressed in that tournament going out in the quarters this year. Inter Milan did go on to win the Champions League. Chelsea win the Europa League. The other side of Milan losing in that one. And Arsenal win the Conference League. My God, man. My, my, that is ridiculous. Oshiman, 40 goal contributions. Vardas Shelia up to a 93 now. These dudes are insane. Edwards, it's an okay season for him, but these guys are absolutely insane. Raspadori is definitely coming back into the starting 11 next season, up to an 83 overall as an attacking midfielder at Milan. You love to see it. Lindstrom as well, getting up to an 80. So we're going to have some real good depth at the attacking midfield role. Of course, we do know that we are losing Contini, but we are also going to be losing Diego Deme, who is retiring, and Juan Jesus, who would not want to sign a new contract. The disappointment of us going out in the fashion we did in the Champions last year, Champions League last year was so disappointing. I want us going all out for the title this year, which is why we are making a huge improvement to the center back role. Gabriel, the Brazilian, is joining us here. Him and Kim Min Jae partnering up in the back line. I am trying to make further improvements to our bench though. Make sure we have a really good backup system going on, which is why we're going to sign the American center midfielder, Weston McKenney. He's joining us from Juve. And to be fair, coming into the season, I was open to keeping Zambo and Gisa as a backup midfielder. Unfortunately, it was going to take him about four years to get converted from a defensive midfielder to a center midfielder. So we have elected to cash in on the Cameroonian midfielder. He's off to Liverpool back in the Premier League. Not with Fulham though. And we are going to say goodbye to 64 rated Antonio Vergara off on a permanent transfer to Pendix Meanwhile, Ambrosino is off to Galatasaray on loan. A lot of questions for us to answer 
answer this season though. I've kept some money in the transfer budget, about 70 million pounds, so that in January, we can make some moves dependent on where we are. Raspadori, I'm giving him the keys to the castle at the moment, but I'm not afraid to upgrade. Estupanan, he's starting to grow a little bit now, but again, I want this team as a Champions League contender. I'm pretty confident we're never gonna have a comfortable group here in the Champions League. Atletico Madrid, Benfica, and Ghent again, probably even more than last year. We're gonna have to be focused, absolutely laser focused. I wanna win the Champions League this year. It's gonna be honestly sack worthy if we get grouped. This isn't, this isn't the way I expected the group stage to go. I'm not mad about it. I am definitely not mad about it, but we are into the knockout rounds. Benfica topping the group ahead of us on goal differential. Atletico Madrid condemned to the Europa League playoffs, but we're into the round of 16 for the second straight year. This year, we're versus Marseille. We've got Marseille, and I'm praying we don't bottle it. One thing we are bottling at the moment, though, is the league. Seven draws. I thought we got the draws out of our systems, lads. We've got one loss all year. Seven draws. All right, we need to sort that out in the second half of the season. I'm really happy with this, though. I was thinking in the back of my head, all right, I might have to upgrade the attacking midfield role in January. Raspadori up to an 85. Edwards up to an 86. And Estupanan up to an 85. And here I was, thinking it was all hunky-dory until I saw this. Stanislav Lobotka wants out of the club. The Slovakian mid Slovakian mid Fielder. I wanted to see him win a Champions League with us. He was exceeding my expectations, but he wants out. I don't want any discontent in the squad. So we're going to use that as an opportunity to get a world-class midfielder, an even higher world-class midfielder. And well, there it is, lads. Stanislav Lobotka is heading to Manchester City. We have sent him there for 48 million pounds to play under Pep Guardiola. However, that's given us enough money to get out into the open market and try getting one of the world's best center midfielders. Let's see if we can strike up a deal here with Barcelona for Frankie de Jong. I'm just going to start out here. It might get me laughed out the door. 110 million pounds for Frankie de Jong. They want 145. I cannot do that much, lads. Oh, I might. I might be in strife here. 116. I've got to save enough money so I can actually do a contract with this guy. Come on, Chavi. You're killing me, man. The most I can stomach, because I need to have money to give a contract, is 125 mil. This right here is make or break. 131. I mean, we... Oh. Oh, I keep saying it's make or break, but Chavi, come on, mate. Don't be a little stinge. Don't be an a**hole. 127, and he accepts. I'm nervous we're not going to have enough money, though. Let's get in and see if we can make it happen. He might honestly have to take a little bit of a pay cut here. Crucial first team player, of course. Three years is fine by me. No release clause. Yeah, oh my God. All right, we need to get rid of these bonuses. All right, he can keep a signing bonus, and I'm going to bump up his wages a little bit here. Come on, Frankie. Come on, Frankie. Come on, Frankie. A monster signing there. Frankie de Jong is going to be joining Enzo Fernandez in the midfield. And that has got to make us one of the teams to beat in the Champions League. You look good in blue, Frankie. You look good in blue. Now let's hope you can absolutely destroy Marseille. We've fleshed out the team. This team on paper should be winning a Champions League this year. We need to actually perform on the field. Marseille, first leg at home. We've, it's a rainy night just like last year when we had Leverkusen at home. But this year, we don't even get a goal. We get, oh, we dominate in possession. We dominate in shots. But we're just not getting it done. And I'm praying that doesn't bite us in the as we head to the velodrome for the second leg. Come on, fellas, let's get it done at the velodrome. It's nil-nil. Just score some goals, get through to the quarterfinals. I don't want another round of 16 exits. We get it done. Perfect. All right, McKenny with a yellow card. Osham and a brace, Marcus Edwards. That is a massive relief. Massive relief. We're into the quarterfinals for the first time. And our European tour is going to continue and see us heading to Dortmund for the the quarterfinals. Benfica kicking around with Sociedad. I would love if we were versus one of them. Dortmund is a huge challenge. We continue to have the first legs at the Diego Maradona Stadium. It's not raining tonight, and I'm hoping that's going to mean we can score some goals. Raspadori needs to bag some. Vardashelia needs to bag some. Come on, fellas. Give us an easy task in the second leg. We do not. It's an action-packed final 10 minutes. Oshaman with a yellow card there. Adeyemi and De Jong on the scorer sheet. Now we have to head to the Signal Iduna Park. 
Park if we're going to do anything here. This is not an easy task. We saw what happened to Atletico Madrid in real life this season when they headed to the Signal Laduna Park. Even having an advantage heading there is not much of an advantage. Instead, we head in all tied up. Come on, lads. Oh, this is... I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely worried about this one. Against Dortmund, we get it done. Raspadori, we call him out. He gets a yellow card in the first minute, but Raspadori scores the winner. We're headed to the semifinals again, man. This team is giving me nothing but heart attacks. Just once, could we make it comfortable? And in the semifinals, we get our wish. I mean, they're still a tough side. So I see that in career mode with Kubo and all those players are a team to be reckoned with. But we've got Real Sociedad in the Champions League semis. They took down Benfica 4-1 on aggregate. Benfica topped our group. So this could be a really tough challenge. Thankfully, we're at full strength for this first leg. Vada Shelley is up to a 94 over overall. We've been getting a lot of yellow cards along the way though, so we need to make sure we are clinical in front of goal and disciplined with our challenges and everything like that. The first leg against Sociedad is a 4-1 win. It could have been five. That is exactly what we've been searching for. Di Lorenzo with a yellow card. I genuinely might sit him and some other players that I've seen get yellows for the second leg, but my God, it is so nice to get a first leg under our belt that is successful. It would take one of the all-time bottle jobs for us not to be playing the Champions League final. I have elected to sit Oshiman and Di Lorenzo for the second leg. They're on yellow card issues. Surely the other lads can carry their slack. The second leg is a one-all draw and we get zero yellow cards. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We're heading to a Champions League final and we're going to be doing it full strength. Who are we versus PSG or Bayern Munich? It looks like it is going to be Bayern Munich. Well, the lads really listened to what I said in January. Just two losses all season. We might have got, what, two draws for the second half of the season? We finished seven points clear with 90 points. Yeah, our team is ridiculous. Scrolling down the table, it is going to be Cagliari, Sampdoria, and Empoli all heading down. Make that our second trophy for the year. We win the Italian Super Cup, but we can't do a domestic treble. AC Milan win Coppa Italia. We go out in the round of 16 to Empoli. But if we can win the Kim Min J derby in the Champions League final, then that will be a treble winning season. Juventus did win the Europa League and Athletic Bilbao win the Conference League. I was kind of hoping it was going to be an Italian Italian team winning the conference league as well because then that would have just been an omen that we were going to win tonight. Omens aside, we've got a ridiculous team. Edwards has stepped up. I was disappointed with his year last year. Currently 28 goal contributions. Man, I am excited for this Champions League final. Let's get into it and see if we can make Napoli European champions once again. Feed it. Come on, we need a strong start here, fellas. Vardashelli up. Look at all the Bayern players around us. Raspadori, it's not Raspadori, it's Vardashelli. I want a challenge. Follow up and we get it with Oshaman. We come out of the gate firing. There was so many black jerseys around us there. That little step over move kind of freed up some space. A few of the Bayern players thought we were gonna cut it back. That unlocks the space and that is a dream start. Do not let Bayern get back into this one. I'm just defending, not doing anything stupid here. They put that one in, that's a big block. They're gonna get the corner though. Corner here for Bayern. Ball in, win that header. They win the header, Merritt sends it wide. Martinelli, Williams outside of the boot. Bayern have woken up. It's Bowie in there to Williams. Big block. It falls to Musiala. Merritt smothers it. Get that one early. Yeah, good stuff to Yong. Oshman, good touch. Needs some space. Bayern players all over him like a bad rash. Just going to push through here. Oshman, square it. Oh, I wanted to go to Raspadori. It's Enzo, though. Save. Get the follow-up. They cut it back. You can see that coming, man. Where's the defense? There's the defense. Come on, Di Lorenzo, the captain. He wants to lift that Champions League trophy. Oh, that gets lucky. That's extremely lucky. Let's make the most of it. Oshman, there it is. Bit of luck on our side, and you can't let Oshaman get into that type of space. The Nigerian nightmare may have just won Napoli a Champions League title. Let's not slack off. Do not let Byron get back into this one. There's still plenty of time for them to do something. I need my midfield to get a block in. Bloody hell. Wake up, lads. A minute left in this one. Kane flicks it up. Kane at the near post. Just take it to the corner. Belt it away. Come on, lads. Referee blows the full-time whistle for the first time since 1989. Napoli are European champions. Di Lorenzo, the man who has exceeded all of my expectations in terms of growth, is going to lift the Champions League trophy here. Here we go. 
Come on, lads. We've done the job. Fellas, if you enjoyed today's Napoli rebuild, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to check out another video.